This show is brought to you by Duxio's Own Baby Productions. Oh, hey. Yeah, I went backwards this time. It's all right. I, I don't even know what the fuck I actually said. He said something about vault dwellers. Vault dwellers, yeah, which means that we're going to be talking about... A clue, Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be talking about Fallout Episode 7 on this uh, on this lovely day of the program. And Let's get it. Look, I'm going to go ahead and say this now. We had 7, and then we had 8. I've watched both of them. You've watched both of them. We're gonna be we're gonna cut this into two episodes, one for seven, one for eight, like we've been doing for everything else. Yeah, we'll so, give we'll give our review obviously we'll, after yeah, eight. Yeah, 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 we'll give our review. But like, dude, this this episode was great, man. Just really just leading everything in. Like, I mean, it gave you everything, so that way the crescendo mm. in eight and, was uh, just so much better. Alex actually watched the last three episodes with me. Oh, really? So yeah, nice. yeah. So she watched the one where I told her where she said something. I forget what she said, but the fucking gila monster, whatever the fuck she said. Can't have dogs, but you can have a fucking mutated fucking gila monster. Um, but I mean, yeah, she Gulper is not that but, far uh, off from that. But then she watched um, uh, seven and eight with me. All right, so let's start it off hanging out with the ghoul. All right, we get to we get to chill with the ghoul. You have this family, <clears throat> this father and son. I mean, we later find out that it's father and son, but for the for the most part, you see two people shift uh, sifting through the sand trying to get the bottle caps. You know, what yeah, I mean? you got some metal detectors and which that is a classic, classic thing from New Vegas. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just having like sifting through the sand to be able to find all that stuff like that. I love that. Yeah, I fucking love that. So they're they found themselves some caps. They go walking back to their place and they're yelling. For Sandra, they're going ahead and give me just like trying to go ahead, but they don't hear anything. Yeah, Sandra's their daughter. Yeah, little sister, daughter. Little sister, but they don't hear an answer from her. So oh. they get into the house, and then all they see is the ghoul sitting yeah, at the table. They've got company. Yes, ghoul sitting at the table eating some food, eating some food, eating some meat. Mm-hmm. That uh, that Miss Sandra, lovely Miss Sandra, made up for him. Uh, so from there you have, um, he lets, Coop lets Sandra go, which is no problem, no issues, but apparently this guy, but but let's not mistake for a hot second how they were trying to let lead you to believe that he was eating Sandra. Yes. Because at first we were like, even Alice, she was like, is he eating her? I was like, fuck, I think he might be. I mean, there's a possibility. I was like, shit, I can't rule it the fuck there's out. There's a possibility. So. Yes, unidentified me. Um, and, uh, but it was the dude, Adam, it was his son, uh, Tommy, is the one that Coop really wanted to talk to. Mm-hmm. Because Tommy is still in correspondence with his brother, who was part of Maldaver's crew. Mm-hmm. And he knows that he has to get to Maldiva in order to be able to, you know what I mean, find the head and be able to get, I mean, the whole fucking thing. Yeah. So he. Well, I was about to say, you also remember, while the head is important to her with stuff that we found out, that's not necessarily his mission with her at this point. No. But yeah, continue. <clears throat> no, so. Um, you end up having uh, you end up having um, his son Tommy. He's telling he's telling Coop where to find his brother. You know what I mean? Like, like where to find Moldaver? Where to find Moldaver? Because you know I mean they're in the hills. The Mad Woman in the hills. Mm-hmm. And to and I mean, you later on find out observatory. You know what I mean the big observatory that's in L.A. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean that's where that, that that that's where she hides out. That's her thing. That's her place. Yeah. And then, um, you know, Coop was I was going to let them all go. And that was but the then, plan. That was the plan. But then he asked, you know, am I going to walk out of here? Or like the second my back is to you, are you going to put one in me? Mm-hmm. And the dad tried to quell that, you know, put that fire. I was like, nothing. You, you can walk out of here like nothing's going to happen. And then Google was like, well, I mean, maybe not today, but. Like, are you going to be 
Like basically, like am I gonna be looking over my shoulder for you? Yeah. There's and like the second he said that, oh Tommy boy, Tommy boy just ran over to the wall real quick, tried to pull his little, tried to pull his pull his gun off the wall, and uh, not a smart idea, especially no. when you're when you're not a smart idea to run to the wall for your piece when uh, there's a dude that's already got a piece on him. <laughs> And uh, Ghoul and whipped that I mean, piece he's out. Pointing at him, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, they 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 know that he's. I mean, he's freaking armed. Yeah, and uh, he 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 put a quick one right in the Tommy's chest. Yeah, and uh, ended that whole thing. And then he just walked his fucking happy ass on up out of there. <laughs> um, and then from there is where you see uh, you 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 take a trip back into a flashback, and you have Moldaver and. <clears throat> He's at the he's at the he's at at one of the he's at like that secret meeting yeah, and he's listened to all these people and he he gets he gets pretty fucking pissed. I forget the line that he used. I need to try to find it. Uh, What about about them ending up in the bread lines? No, no. The line he used when he stood up and he was getting ready to walk out, and Moldaver stopped him. Oh, he well, he he said this is about all the all the horse shit I can take. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's you know because he he's hearing about this utopia, basically that you know. In th- I mean, fuck, we deal with it in real life. We're in theory, great, but likely, possible, even probably not. Yeah. But, so, Moldaver is telling not only Coop but everybody there essentially. Well, I mean, she does tell him later because she hands him a listening device because she wants him to spy on his wife. Because she works for Voltec. Because she works for Voltec. And it was, he at first was fucking like, you're out of your fucking mind. I'm not going to spy on my wife. But something in the back of his mind made him go ahead and actually do it because he went home and he put the little listening device right near the pit boy and then he basically hacked the pip boy to where the um the tr- not only the tracking but also like the uh the you I mean the voice recording stuff is on so he's able to hear everything through a little earpiece and at first he tested it at home because you know what I mean his it was his, just him his wife and his kid yeah you know what I mean and his wife and his kid were outside uh you know I mean eating in the backyard and he was listening in the house you know what I mean like just baffled baffled that he actually did this to his family because like it is such a betrayal. You know what I mean? Especially in his mind to go ahead and not trust the mother of your children. You know what I mean? You, you, yeah. You mean the woman you plan to spend the rest of your life with? Yeah. He took us a little too far, by the way. I but did not. Yeah. So after I would never, so after he gets the, the listening device, it cuts back to, Lucy getting found um, and being kind of... So now we're getting back to the part of the episode that we first started, but now we're not going to talk about because that one is now going to be scrapped. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Essentially. I don't don't mind peeking behind the curtain. It's all good. Essentially. So Lucy was forced to watch a video, an old video, uh, from a vault to see, you know, what types of things were were going on Mm -hmm. uh you want to fill the people in uh yeah so um there were because she asked them she's like well like basically like what the fuck are you doing to people in this thing like what are you doing like i just watched you like torture this woman from the video that she saw in the the previous episode yeah so apparently the gulper that we saw kill never mind i went ahead again so the video that she sat there and watched i mean it showed it showed, you I mean, the scientists and they were talking about the experiments that they've been doing and what's been going on there. But, I mean, you can see in the background shit's going sideways. Yeah. And eventually, you I mean, the scientists get killed and then you see a gulper go past and it's, you I mean, it's fucking finger mouth or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Like, the tongue is so nasty. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, you see that. And then the overseer says that that's actually his... <laughs> What did he say? His great uncle? His great uncle, I believe, on his, on his Peter, mom's side. Yeah. On his mom's side. Yeah. <laughs> but essentially, the entire thing is just everybody's lab rats. 
I mean, that's the whole point. The whole point of that particular lab, of that particular vault, is for the scientific. I mean, for scientific experiment experimentation. Yeah. And they were all experimented on. Yes. And that's how you got the overseer with a fucking cyclops eye, and 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 you got you got nose you got nose in the middle of the forehead, dude. You, Dude's got the, an ear sitting on the top of his head like a shark um, um, But she was told while she, you know, while she didn't realize what she had stumbled upon, she was told she was still going to have to pay for her crimes of going to a level she was restricted to go to mm-hmm. and uh, now has information that she was not supposed to have. So that is when they drag her they, from where they were. From, from where they were. I mean, it looked like it was one of those quarantine rooms, you know what I mean? Because they had, because because um, the overseer and his second in command were on the other side of this glass. You know what I mean? So so it looked like one of those quarantine rooms that they were in to begin with. Yeah. Um, And when she gets dragged past Maximus, Maximus, he's bewildered. I'll say it like that because he doesn't really know what to do. You have the water fountain. You have the waterfall going on the TV. He is fucking enjoying some goddamn popcorn. And he, he really doesn't want to leave. He he feels like he should stay. He feels like everything is gonna be okay. It's all right, but he just he knows that he's got to do something for Lucy. Yeah. Um. So he has that he has that look in his eye. He gets up, and you get a feeling that something's coming. And then right after that, we finally it's been a while, but we get back to Thaddeus. Good old Thaddeus. Good old Thaddeus when his little fucking. Stick figure body lugging this heavy ass bag with a he's head. got with a head and he's being followed by um by uh CX four oh four CX four oh four. Can't wait to hopefully not call him that for much longer. Um <laughs> CX four oh four. So he stops to kind of reassess, you know, what his plans are because he's he's limping like a motherfucker. So he yeah, finds his, he finds his, his little foot's... car. He 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 takes his sock off and his foot is uh let's just say his foot looks a little ghoulish. <laughs> it is fucking mangled. I mean, it's, look at the same dude, time. It's mangled. He He's got toes falling. On. He got stepped on by someone in a fucking T sixty. T sixty. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He fucking got crunched. Yes. But the big thing is that CX four hundred four just keeps on ripping at his bag. It keeps on slowing him down, dog. Because I mean, the dog is just trying to get to. The, it's just trying to have the head. And I guess you I mean dogs have a good idea of who's good and who's bad. And he don't like. He don't like the smell of Thaddeus. So. During this whole thing, Thaddeus sees a old Nuka Cola fridge. I mean, I mean, because he's at this he's at this one spot. It's kind of like a gas station. You know, actually, it's a Red Rocket, so I mean, yeah. it is a gas station. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> he puts the dog in the fridge, which Dick move. I was happy to see at least had like an, a hole for some air, but Dick move. I look, man. I knew the dog wasn't going to be hurt, but I'm like, I'm like, yeah, dude, that's fucked up, man. What, who the fuck do you think you are? That dude gets fucked up in a hot second when someone finds him. If that's real life, you that's, see how oh people, because we see, un- unfortunately, very unfortunately, you see videos of people doing shit like that, just fucking, you know, letting their dog out on the fucking highway and just closing the door and fucking driving off, and the dog's fine. It's like, if anyone. Tracks you down, they're gonna beat the fuck out of you. Yeah, you gonna and I cosign, <laughs> cosign, hundred percent. Um, yeah, but he puts the dog in the Nuka Cola fridge, and then he makes his way towards the radio tower. That you know, what I mean, so he that, can get in touch with the Brotherhood. Yep, yeah, so, so that way he can get in touch with the Brotherhood. Now, one of the things he does do is that he puts his big ass bag in a trunk of mm-hmm. a car, so all he's carrying is the head, nothing else. I mean, so he's got he's got the head and the power core, the fusion core that he took ah, yes, out of, core. which is which ends up being important. Very much. Uh, so. he, yeah, he pulls that um, fusion core, the one that he took from from Maximus, and he puts that in his shirt. But yeah, he's basically making it so he ain't got to lug a heavy ass bag anymore. He's got nah, the head. Man, he's running light. He's got the head, which is the most important. He's got a gun and he's got a fusion core. So the way he looks at it, he's like, I got what I need. I got a way to defend myself. I got a bargaining chip. You know what I mean? It works. So uh, from one, there, we actually head back to the vault again. Yeah, because it is time for Lucy's "quote unquote" trial, and uh, we actually don't have to spend too much time here because it's very strange. 
So, I thought it was fucking hilarious. Oh, it was funny. Because, I mean, look, you have... I was just watching it. <laughs> it was just on. <laughs> so, because of her high crimes and everything else that she did, after, I mean, the entire vault is in this, I mean, is in the room, and they're like, you are sentenced to banishment. They're like... We, and she, you gotta go. You gotta go. And she and she's just like, "Well, you're you're letting you're, me go. You're gonna let me go." And then he takes out this sword to cut the ropes that they've got her tied in. And apparently, he he blames it on the sword not being sharp enough at the end. But he literally, it was like something. It was like the ah Peter with Peter. Griffin, and in fact, yeah. that's what it felt like. This dude is just sitting here, just taking these tiny little short baby strokes, and then. <laughs> yeah. Sawing at it with the with, to, with the sword to to get her out, but it's it's just so funny that she did the one thing that you're not allowed to do in this vault, and her punishment was what she wanted to begin with. Yes, to get out. Just let me out. <laughs> now the best part is that they give her a whole fuck ton of stuff. You know what I mean? They keep on handing her stuff like 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 two months supply yeah. of like fucking food and shit. That gets fucked up a little bit though. Because I mean, yes, it gets fucked up. It was a good it was it was a good gesture and an even better gesture was right before she was about to be um let out, she did mention that um that Maximus loves it there and he's got a good heart. Let him let him just stay. just let him stay and let him be. Now, while this is happening, remember we said Maximus got that look in his eye when she was being drug away, and as soon as she said that he, um, that he, uh, you know, that he was a great person and to just let him stay, it cuts to him and he's going back he's into putting that. putting in the codes in the reactor room. To get that fusion core. Taking the fusion core and then you just see him walking in the T-60 armor. And I, I told, uh, I'd forgotten where they had the suit. So I turned to my wife, I was talking to Alex and as soon as he got his hands on the fusion core, I was like, I was like, babe, if he gets in that armor, it's over. And she was just like, yeah, and then I saw him walking in the armor. I was like, "Oh, it's," and then Let's she go. and then, and then she goes, Alex goes, "Well, I guess it's over." I was like, "If he wants it to be, and he's the only one that gets to choose." Yep. <laughs> it's like if he wants it to be over, it's over. So right when Lucy's about to get booted out, you you just hear her name get yelled out with I mean through this like freaking megaphone, and it's Maximus in the armor. So he comes down and he's just like throwing motherfuckers around and he threw I'm pretty sure he killed one. He threw one dude like off a fucking metal pole and then broke a whole bunch of shit. And then when Lucy was finally able to get his attention was like, dude, stop. Like they're, they're letting, letting me go. Like <laughs> He's like, oh, uh, and then he then the fucking the hilarious part is he points the one dude on the ground. He's like, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> he points at the one dude that he really fucked up, the one I think he killed, and he goes, you should probably send someone to check on that guy, <laughs> yeah. which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> and then they get in the elevator, and he just looks at... It wouldn't be as funny if he wasn't in the suit. It wouldn't have even been as funny had he popped the mask part out and you could see his face, but just him being in the full suit, mm. and then the elevator doors lock, and they just look at each other, and he just goes, oops. <laughs> like, I was dying, bro. I was like, bro, that is that is not an appropriate oops. <laughs> Now, they make their way out of Vault Vault 4, and what Lucy didn't know was that Maximus stole the fusion core from the vault. Which, she knew enough about the suits anyway. I don't know how, like, what did she think, that he had fucking had an extra on him? <laughs> yeah, that's the part I don't understand. <laughs> that, that was a little weird. It's like, wait, you know how these suits work. How, what did you think, he, like, short, he short-circuited or something? So... They get into this huge thing about whether to give back the fusion core, and yeah, because she because she said you know that that place will only have auxiliary power for a few days, and then after that you're basically condemning you know all these people to to death, and you know Maximus is like you know if you want to find your father, we need this to get there, and then she goes you know she basically tells him my father wouldn't want me to find him if he knew this is what I had to do yeah. in order to get there, that I had to sentence this entire vault to death. And then Maximus brings up wanting to be a knight, and then she's like, how can you how can you be a knight and do that? You know what I mean? And steal. And Yeah, I mean, I, I mean straight up straight up giving him the, the paladin run. The, co the code. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Like, you can't be a knight and go against the code. So she convinced him, and he, he gave that fucking... He gave that... He I gave do that enjoy fusion that core back. scene, because they popped the fusion core out, and they dropped the fusion core in the same way that they got in, in the first place, I mean, in that one room. The, the room that said medicine? Yeah, that kind of just, like, the floor drops out. And then you just rant, you just hear somebody go, Thank you! <laughs> And then Lucy and Lucy and Maximus have a nice little moment that kind of leads you to believe where things could be going. Cause it was yeah. a really nice moment with her talking about how, you know, she really hasn't met a trustworthy person that hasn't been trying to fuck her up, kill her, do something since she's been up here or even really while she was in her own damn vault. And, uh, you know, she's basically saying that Maximus is, you know, the best person she knows and the most honest person she knows to which Maximus had to say, well, hold up there. Cause I am actually not Titus. <laughs> exactly. Because remember, up until this point, Lucy still thinks she's dealing with Titus. Night Titus. So he tells the truth, the legit truth, uh, about everything that happened, about how he is not Titus and you know how he let him die essentially to uh so he could be the knight. And uh she basically let him off the hook because she was like, you know. I've had to do shitty things while I was up here, and clearly that's kind of what people have to do up here to fucking live, Mm -hmm. unfortunately. So I guess I'll give you a pass on this one is basically what it seemed like. Yeah, it didn't didn't bother her as as much as as Maximus thought it would. There wasn't no big-ass fight, not not none of that. Um, Now we go from Maximus to Thaddeus. Yep, Max, right back to Thad on his... On his Daddy. journey, on his journey, limping like a motherfucker, looking like his leg about to fall Dude, off. It's like it looks bad, but he gets noticed by somebody. Good old snakes, snake oil salesman himself. Yep, and uh, I, the chicken fucker. Yeah, and I love that they were. I love that that's his name. Is chicken snake fucker? No, is snake oil salesman. We 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 watch with the captions on. Oh, and whenever <laughs> whenever he whenever he speaks, it says snake oil salesman. Nice. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, look, it says it right here as well. But um yes, yeah, so apparently he is he's quite the alchemist, which we don't learn until this scene. He tells Thaddeus that he can fix Thaddeus's foot. He can make Thaddeus right his reign, but it's gonna cost him. Well, nope, sorry. I fucked up because they had he had a gun pulled on on the snake oil salesman first. Yep. See, I caught myself. At least I caught I, myself. Why do you think I didn't say nothing? At least I caught myself. I let you. You can fix that. So, Thaddeus is walking in the desert, and the snake oil salesman sees him and tries to coerce him to, go, I mean, to let him fix his foot. So, from there, they end up in... What he calls his office, which is just, you know what I mean? It's just a building that's just absolutely been doomed over by Sam. Which we saw in one of the first couple episodes yeah. when the ghoul, when Coop nicely put him out of his misery. Out of the hard part. True. So. I hate that motherfucker's ass, too. <laughs> Different context in this show, but. I mean, when you gotta, you gotta. But. Eating ass with a fork and knife is different than this shit. <laughs> so they end up in his quote unquote office. And when the guy is grabbing things and trying to like make a mix, Thaddeus pulls a gun on him. And essentially goes, just give me, give, all, give me all your shit. Just give me everything. Yeah. The guy is able to talk Thaddeus into, uh, not you know I mean I mean not shooting him, not only that, but also saying, Look, I'll fix your foot. I'll get you back to where you need to be. And from there he does all his concoction and shit like that. It was wild, dude. Like I mean, it looked like he didn't have any idea what the fuck he was doing. Which kind of made sense because it was dope, like watching his foot come back together, but like it never fully came back together before he put his boot on. Like, he had two toes still fucking, like, sideways and crooked and yeah, shit. He, 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 and he, I he was like, and that's why guy. I was like, this is actually kind of funny because a dude like that would absolutely not know how to actually fully heal shit. He got you some of the way there. Um. So, 
the guy, the Snake Oil Salesman is like, hey, we got to figure out payment. And Thaddeus goes under his shirt, grabs out the core, and goes, this is all I have. And he goes, well, if that's all you have, I guess that's all I guess that's all I'll take. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you, meanwhile, you mean the dude's losing his mind in his head that he got a fusion core because yeah. those things ain't fucking cheap. No. But yeah, man, he gave Thaddeus an inhaler. He inhaled in. And just like you were saying, his foot was fixing itself. Yeah. Like it. I ain't never seen no shit like that. No. Ain't that ain't that about something? Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah then, so now do you remember what he said to him right before he left they were talking about shady sands i believe because remember he's they were talking something about you know the the radiation and and whatnot and he said radio tower they were talking about the nearest radio tower but but i'm saying then once they brought up the conversation about the radiation the snake oil salesman before he left dropped that little nugget and said well, don't worry, because that's not something you're going to have to worry about in a few hours anyway. Yeah. Or or, some, or maybe he didn't say a few hours. That's not something you're going to have to worry about in anymore. a while anymore. And to which that he's kind of had this look like, Wait, what the fuck do you mean? Yeah, we'll we find out later what he meant. Yeah, and, that, and then he, I mean, he hastily packs himself up, runs out. Thaddeus goes and just kind of walking on sunshine. You know what I mean? Making his way through. Uh, then from there, we get back to Vault 33. We need to do. hang out with Norm. Norm, little peanut head. Uh, yeah, so Norm is still serving food to the raiders that they have in the prison. And Betty wants to rehabilitate them and have them be a part of society. There was a point when they were trying to figure out what to do with them that Norm said they should kill him. And what's her face? Uh, Nuka Cola girl. Mm-hmm. You mean, you mean she, she didn't was, really disagree? No, she did not, because she said flat out, "If your dad was here, he would he would do, do the same ne- thing. He would have done what was necessary. He would have done what was necessary." Which you mean she's leaning into was the same fucking thing. Steph, that's her name. God damn it, keep on messing this up. But uh, so what Norm did was that he started putting rat poison in the Raiders' food, and they obviously they ate it. A whole bunch of them got sick. They died. They took the black girl that was like the administration chick sitting at the desk. They took her out thinking that she was the one that did it. Yeah. Uh, and Betty had, you know, Betty had this whole look on them and she told him, she said, see, your words have heavy meaning. What you say matters. And then from there, they start getting into what the plan is with vault 32. They're like, okay, we are going to redo Vault 32. We already went through this with the other episode. Re, I mean, everybody's, we're going to send people over there. They're going to live, and they're going to bring out prosperity and do all the fun stuff. So Betty, she's like, okay, time to make the choices. Let's figure out who's going to 32. You have people like Woody, Davey, Chet, Steph. They're all going to 32. Now, Chet going to 32, obviously breaking up Chet and Norm. Norm, yeah. Breaking up the besties. Yep. And, uh, I mean, because Chet is now a dad. (laughs) I still don't get that. I don't get how he just takes the responsibility like that. Hey, man. They raise them weird in the vaults, man. Vault politics, bro. Next man, dude, next man up. Next man up. (laughs) Next man up, bro. Jesus Christ. Next fucking man, dude. That, up. Yo, yo, that's Bill Belichick's fucking safe house, there, man. Shit. Oh my god. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. You had you had everybody standing in the you mean in the main area for you mean going into thirty two, and they all had their like packages and everything else, and they just they yeah. make their way through. They had a dissenter or two, or <laughs> tried. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. One of the guys got right back in Woody. line. I think so. It was either Woody or Reg. One of the two. Yeah. And he was, he was like, nope, I'm going back. I'm going back to 33. I, I belong in 33. This is where I'm supposed to be. And the guards just stopped him. And he goes, okay, I'm sorry. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about it. He's like, sorry for the hold up. We can, we can go. <laughs> and then from there, you have, you just watch everybody walk into the darkness. That is Vault 32. And then we get back 
thank God we get back to the Red Rocket. Yes, because the ghoul is now at the Red Rocket. Yeah, so he's hot on his heels with for Thaddeus, find, I mean, trying to find the kid, trying to find where he's at. And he sees blood on the ground. He leans over, I mean, kind of feels it, stuff like that. And then he hears something behind him. He looks in the Nuka-Cola fridge, and dog meat's in there. Or, God damn it. He, see, cause, look, it's, it's, it calls it dog meat here. It calls it dog meat here. Fuck you. Leave me alone. So he turns around, and uh, he goes inside the Nuka-Cola fridge, and he sees CX-404. And it looked like he was about to just leave the dog and just keep on going on his way. But then he's like, everything about him with dogs. He, I mean, he going ahead and he grabbed them out. And yeah, I mean, they look, the dog knows where to go because the dog knows where the head is. He smells, he's smelling the head. He tries to track it down. So they go, they start walking to go ahead and find the head themselves. Yeah, they sure do. And now after that, we end up back in a flashback with Coop after having uh, had the meeting with Moldaver and, you know, that whole group and gotten the, um, the microphone to listen in on his wife. And um, this is where he makes his move to go and, and basically hack into her pit boy, get it to, you know, sync up with his mic. He figured give it a little test run while they're at the, at the crib and just doing, <laughs> doing dinner and shit. It's, and, you know, Alex, in the most Alex way possible, said the funniest shit. She was just like, of course she just left the pit boy, pit boy like, wide out right there where he could easily do something with it. I mean, she's she has, like, there's she no designated no, pit boy spots in these places. She has no thought that he's going to betray uh, Well, yeah, of course. Him. You know what I mean? <laughs> but he is, after he listens to his wife and daughter on the earpiece, he is so disgusted with himself. Because he, he didn't just trust his wife. Yeah, that he, that he, throws, took, the, yeah. he throws the earpiece in the trash. Mm-hmm. And then later on, he goes, digs it out. <laughs> well, yes, because that night while she's sleeping, he's sitting down and he's watching in, in an interview with himself. And I forget who it was um, on the TV. It was when they were shooting that commercial for Vault 4. Mm-hmm. About how, oh, we'll all be living down here. And yeah, the scientists. Um, yeah, and if I remember correctly... Oh, yeah, I, no, no, I said it right. Yeah, he, you know, he changed his mind, and then later that night he fishes it out of the trash. Yeah, for sure. But it's, it was, but it was something that tipped him off to do that. That I'm forgetting. It was something with the dogs. No, I mean the dog just looked at him. Yeah, I mean, I mean the dog, but the dog was I mean, look. The dog was with him when he when he hacked it. The dog was with him when he was sitting there listening, and the dog was with him when he grabbed. I mean, grabbed it out of the trash later on that night. Yeah, but I th- I think. Uh, and, but I think that's also connected to what she said at the dinner table a couple episodes ago when she said no dogs in the vault. Mm-hmm. And he was looking like, I love this dog. This dog seems to think that something's up here. So I need to be absolutely sure that everything's on the up and up if I'm leaving this fucking dog and, and, and going into this place. So yeah, he does dig it, dig it back out. And uh, once they, once those two start sitting at a fire and relaxing, you get to hear one of the greatest sentences in the entire series. I'm sorry, dog meat, but you ain't him. Mm-hmm. He's talking about missing his dog, Roosevelt. But we finally get dog meat. I've been waiting for that the entire fucking thing. So was I. But even when I saw the dogs, I was like, I'm still not 100% convinced that they're going to go there. Uh, I was like, I, mean, may, may, I was like, it would make sense. It's, There's only been one damn dog in that fucking run of games. Yes. That took over the world as far as like, uh, like, uh, Fallout 4. Definitely. Like, MP, uh, like NPCs. NPCs. Yeah. Uh, and especially like the ones on your team that help you. Yes. Like, <laughs> Um. Anyway, after that, we are now back once again with Thaddeus and Fred Armisen. I'm pretty sure <laughs> is who that was. It was, which was very weird. I was ready for weird once <clears throat> Michael Rappaport was Titus right out the gate. I mean, look. Once I saw Armisen's face, I was like, mm. I'm not. I'm not the hugest fan of the guy, 
So I, I mean, like, I was like, all right, fuck it, just let's let's get through this. <laughs> let's see how this goes. <clears throat> but from there, you have Thaddeus making the call at the KPSS radio station, where Fred Armisen, who is playing DJ Carl, uh, Thaddeus thanks Carl for letting him use the radio. Uh, Carl wants to talk about fiddles. And fiddling and listening to fiddles on the radio because of certain things he's hearing in the music. Because, <clears throat> and it was just like, it was fucking stupid. That was the, that was the Armisen part that I, that I'm like, all right, let's get, the, let's get through this. What's that? With the whole thing with the fiddles. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I fully understand this will make somebody laugh. Not me. And uh, who strolls up in the middle of this fiddle conversation but Lucy and Maximus? Yeah. They find their way there and Thaddeus draws on them immediately. Oh, he ain't he ain't bullshitting at all. No, he ain't bullshitting with 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 pulling the gun. He bullshitting with everything after because he couldn't hit the broadside of a fucking barn. He couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. <laughs> to which he even said <laughs> to which he even said, God, I suck without a scope. Yep. <laughs> um That was a good line. Yeah. So he runs out of basically runs out of all his shit. He goes, takes one step backwards steps on a trap and a fucking arrow shoots right through his goddamn neck to which thinking well night night no that was easy okay that was easy that's over uh but then he's standing there just like all too calm uh uh, guys yeah Uh. and (laughs) and he uh he decides to just pull that motherfucker out (laughs) he decides to pull that motherfucker out watches his neck heal up Watches his neck heal up, and that's when he realizes that he's a ghoul. He's a ghoul, and as this is happening, you can hear and then start to see the vertebrates coming in. Yep, that he called. <laughs> yep, and, but he uh, also knows that the Brotherhood will never take him back. Exactly, being a ghoul. exactly. They'll they'll, they'll, so, they'll kill him on sight. So Maximus goes up to him and just basically was like, "Dude, just give me the head, and I'll, I'll let you get out of here." Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that is just like, "Fine, like." You know, all got fucked up. I didn't mean for this to happen, blah, blah, blah. And then, but yeah, cool. Thanks. And then he just fucking takes off. And then Lucy and Maximus, well, after Maximus does one cool thing, they know, he knows that they want the head. Lucy needs the head wherever they just were. He found like two or three dead bodies and he took the head off of one of them. Smash, smash, fuck out, smash the fuck out of it. So it wasn't easily recognizable and smart, very smart. And basically said, you know, I'll, Essentially, I'll deal with them. I'll hold them off. You go do. You go find your dad. What you got to do. And then they had their moment. Such they a, has such an awkward fucking kiss, and another awkward kiss, and another awkward. Yeah, I I fully understand that. You know what I mean? They they're weird, but not only do they kiss, but the fucking <laughs> the heads, heads kiss. kiss. <laughs> yeah, which was even weirder. And when we say the heads kiss, they didn't like come alive and fucking kiss, but like they're both they're both holding a decapitated head, and while they're kissing, they got the decapitated heads fucking pressed up on one another. And it's it was such a strange scene, but it was funny as hell. So Maximus is then again gives Wolzig, I mean gives Wolzig's head to Lucy. They go, and while this is happening, while this is happening. Um, good old Norm dips out, dips out, decides to sneak into the overseer's office who we had, we had suspicions about from the beginning. Oh, just, yeah. she's strange, strange little bird, off. says little strange off. things, looks strange sometimes. And he goes and he logs on, uh, or should I say logs on, he hacks in and Which, I, lo- yes. you say it, you go ahead and say it. So while they didn't actually do it, it was still cool they to didn't see do it, which I was kind of. I immediately had a little chub was and was telling for, Alex, and I was like, oh, they didn't do it. Uh, but here's the thing, though. The spots... Okay, so we see the computer, and it and what it does is that it gives you the... The hack screen. The hack screen that you get from that the That everyone games. knows if you play the games, where you see how many letters the word is, and then you have actual words you can see. Not only the words, but also, like, I mean, when it's, like, in between, like, the parentheses and all the other stuff, when you have those things, those spaces filling up, it had those in there, too, when mm-hmm. he was scrolling down. Yep. That was the part, I mean, that was the little Easter egg part that I loved from yeah. it. I'm like, oh shit, they even added that little that little detail. Yeah. But he ends up sending a message to Vault 31 acting as Betty. And he says, um, 
he's like, I mean, mission's been comp- mission might have been compromised. And uh, he gets a message back asking, give me saying, get to 31 immediately. So that's what he does. He makes his way to 31. He It opens up for him. And when he walks through, you just keep on hearing him say, hello? Hello? Because he's hearing somebody saying something. You know I mean, something's going on. And, uh, you mean, you hear this mechanical noises and stuff like that. And then we fade to black. Yep. Roll credits. What a hell of a way to roll credits. Roll credits. But boy, did they give you a lot to chew on in that episode. They started to, you know, tie some things up. You start, you know, you got a little romance progression with Maximus and Lucy. That was cute. Um, I appreciate that. It was awkward, but it was cute. You got what I assume was, you know, some finality with between Thaddeus and Maximus. Possibly. We'll see. I mean, it seemed like for the most part, you know what I mean? Like, they, 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 if they he buried does, the hatchet. If he does come back, he's going to be fully ghouled out. Into which he's going to be even more awkward. Yeah. You got, you got more of the backstory with uh, with Moldaver and with, about vault and Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, um, yeah, dude, we we get just that much closer to the end. And like we said, hell of a way for it to end. So we're going to let Anthony end this. Aha. See what I do? Let Anthony do this part, and then what we're going to do is we'll, 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 we will go ahead and we'll start recording for the next episode. So, Ant, your turn. Glorious. It's a, it's a <laughs> glorious day today, and it's Saturday, and we're going to connect with CGC. You can find us at consolegamingcrew.com. You can find us at our email, which is consolegamingcrew at gmail.com. Our Twitter handle, by the way, is at consolecrew. YouTube and Instagram are both consolegamingcrew. If you check us out, check out Boss Rush Network, which is bossrush.net. Great place. There's lots of things you can find there aside from us. Great people. By the way, Twitch should be returning at some point. It is CGC Podcast. We have co-op Mondays, and we're going to do something fancy for Fridays. I don't know yet. But that's where you can find us. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. (laughs) This was a show from... Productions on Ravy Productions.